Welcome. In this demonstration, we're going to walk through the steps of dispatching a service order and completing a service order in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. In the previous video, we walked through the steps of creating a new service request from our customer Mindy Martin at Canon Group. In this role as the dispatcher, I'm going to open up the NAV dispatch board. On the top of the screen, I have a set of filters that I can use to narrow down which orders I want to dispatch. In this case, you can see I've already have filters set here so that I'm only looking at service orders with a status of pending. I could quickly change these filters to look at other orders as well. In this case, since I'm dispatching these orders to our field technicians, what I'll do is I'll, we'll look at the, this one that we just created, service order number 40 for Canon Group. And you'll notice that at this point I do not have any resources allocated to this order. What I can do if I want to view this document is I click on Show Document. I can now look at all of the details of this. I can see that the unit is not functioning well. I can view the comments. Mindy says the unit is not stable and shuts down periodically throughout the day. I could also view the history of this service item to see what other service activities have taken place on this serialized piece of equipment that's out at the customer site. Once I understand the details and I see that this is in our service zone M, I decide that Mark Hansen should be allocated or assigned to work on the service order. For this, I click on Resource Allocations. From within this screen, I can quickly add in that I want Mark to be allocated to this, and I'd like him to do this today. So I'm going to type T for today and allocate one hour for him to look into this activity. If I had a question about perhaps if Mark was available, I could simply click on the advanced list, drill down to Mark, and look at Mark's availability. You'll notice, you'll see that now in this case, on Monday, July 9th, Mark has an avail a capacity of eight hours and currently no assigned activities. So he currently has eight hours of available time to work on this. At this point, Mark has been assigned. I select OK. And now you'll notice that I do have a resource allocated to this order. As a last step, if I wanted to, I could go print out a copy of the service order. I could print it and email it directly to Mark so that Mark sees a copy of this service order and all of the comments and details that he might need in order to contact the customer uh, to service this item. Once Mark is completed with the service on this order, we have the ability to track the various costs and items used to complete this repair. For this part of the presentation, let's assume that Mark wrote down that he needed to replace the base on the item and also spent one and a half hours working on this issue. Directly from the service order, I can open the service item worksheet. Here I can select the amount of time that Mark spent on this order. In this case, he said 1.5 hours. You'll notice that the billing rate came in at $83 per hour. That could be based on the work type, that, the type of activity that Mark did, or just Mark's resource uh, record in general. Also, you'll notice that no discounts apply. This item is not currently covered under contract, and it's not currently covered under warranty. Because of that, it's assumed that no discounts apply and the customer will be charged uh, for this service. In addition, I can record any inventory items or components or parts that Mark used to complete the repair of this item. In this case, he needed to replace the base, which was in this case $100. The customer does receive certain discounts or price breaks based on certain categories of products, and those discounts will also apply not only in sales but also throughout the service module. Lastly, if there were any other types of costs that I needed to add, for example, a, a start fee, a travel fee, 
or shipping charges, any other costs, I could add those onto uh, the service order as well. Once I'm finished, I select OK. I change the repair status code to finished. And lastly, I can post the order. Once the order is posted, the customer has now been billed for those services and that service order will now exist in our finished service order history so that in the future users can access that and see the prior history of service on that serialized piece of equipment. Thank you very much.